Hi, my name is Autumn and I'm a handbag addict. I have a serious problem. I've been thinking about making this video for quite a while, but I recently got a comment that prompted me to do it now. The comment reads, I think the constant unboxing videos makes it seem like a channel is the result of having a shopping addiction. Maybe it's a YouTube content creator mentality to unbox, unbox, unbox. Personally, I'm trying to not have my life revolve around shopping, but if someone enjoys shopping and wants to do it all the time, Time, then that's their prerogative. I didn't take that as a negative comment. I took it as a wake-up call. Do I have a handbag addiction? Do you? Stay tuned to find out. Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community post on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. The the word addiction is thrown around a lot on these luxury handbag channels. Most people use it in jest. For some people it's even in the name of their channel. And please know if you're one of those people, what I'm about to say is not meant for you directly. This is just my personal feelings on the word addiction and the way we use it in luxury. Now I have done a video before on signs you might be a handbag addict, which similar to how it's used in this community most often, was done in a lighthearted way. However, I have been very conscious of not using that word often on my channel. And the reason for that is addiction is a real thing. It's a very serious thing. It's a thing that ruins lives, and I have firsthand experience with that with my father. Those of you who've been around on my channel for a long time already know this story. My father was, is, probably still is a cocaine addict to the point that he's been homeless for I think a little more than 15 years at this point. So that word addiction is not something that I take that lightly. I know that it can cause serious damage and I don't want to joke about it most of the time. Every once in a while I do. And again, I'm not judging other people who use the word more lightheartedly. It's just something that I choose not to do except on a few rare occasions. So in this video, prompted by that comment I read at the beginning, I want to explore the idea of addiction in terms of handbags and shopping and the things that we do on the YouTube channels and the things that I see in the Facebook groups and social media where a lot of of us call ourselves addicts and a lot of us are called addicts by other people and told we have a problem but are we really addicts do we really have a problem let's explore first I'll go through what addiction really is I'll try to get through that sort of quickly because then we'll get to the juicy stuff afterwards stick around for that addiction is a bit difficult to define because there are so many ways that you can be addicted to things or many things you can be addicted to so I looked up a few definitions and found some overlap here. One is from Healthline. These are all online. It says an addiction is a chronic dysfunction of the brain system that involves reward, motivation, and memory. It's about the way your body craves a substance or behavior, especially if it causes a compulsive or obsessive pursuit of reward and lack of concern over consequences. So we have a behavior, in this case shopping, a reward, the bag you buy, and a lack of concern over consequences we'll get to more later. Psyche.co says addiction can be defined as a persistent compulsive need to use a substance or behavior despite the negative consequences to you or others. And Medical News Today says addiction is an inability to stop using a substance or engaging in a behavior even though it's causing psychological and physical harm. So the key points that I pulled from those definitions are the inability to stop and that the behavior causes harm and you keep doing it anyway. When we think of addiction, I think we tend to to think of drug addiction, right? But there's really a lot more to it. You can be addicted to substances like coffee, caffeine. It's one of the reasons I don't drink coffee because I hear people who do drink coffee regularly say, oh, I'm not myself until I have my coffee and I don't want to be that way. And I don't know how serious those people are, but they seem to be kind of serious. So no judgment, just that's why I don't drink coffee. I also don't like it. That was a tangent. Gambling. Anger as a coping strategy. That's an interesting 
having one food, I might have an issue with that. Technology and work, you can be addicted to work. I've also heard of shopping as an addiction. We'll talk more about that. This article notes that technology and work addictions are not recognized as addictions by the American Psychiatric Association in their most recent edition of the DSM. I studied psychology, social personality psychology, so I have a little bit of knowledge in this area, but this was definitely not my specialty. The DSM, if you don't know, is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders. This is where they list all the things that could be wrong with you. Depressive disorder, uh, bipolar, anxiety, ADHD, substance abuse. I will say the DSM is updated every few years as the science evolves. And sometimes, especially with psychology, there can be a social aspect. For example, homosexuality a few decades ago was listed in the DSM as a disorder. We understand now that that is not a disorder. It's crazy to me that it was listed in there and sad, I think. But know that things change as science evolves. Some signs of addiction have to do with lack of self-control involving what you're addicted to. So signs include social signs such as seeking out situations that encourage a substance or behavior. Behavioral such as increased secrecy. Plenty to do a video on that. Secrecy regarding handbag purchases. Health related like insomnia or memory loss and things related to personality changes. And someone with an addiction may recognize that there are negative consequences to their addiction but can't or won't change their behavior. And some of these behaviors can include unrealistic or poor assessment of the pros and cons associated with using the substance or performing the behavior, blaming other factors or other people for your problems, increased levels of anxiety, depression, and sadness, increased sensitivity and more severe reactions to stress, trouble identifying feelings, and trouble telling the difference between feelings and the physical sensation of one's emotions. Now the consequences of addiction, this this is key too, I think. You can have physical consequences to some addictions such as heart disease, HIV AIDS, neurological damage. You can also have psychological and emotional consequences like anxiety, stress, depression. Social consequences like being put in jail or relationships being damaged. And economic consequences like bankruptcy and debt. So a few of those connect to shopping addictions. So that's an overview of what addictions are. Now let's analyze this luxury handbag world and talk about whether we fit the definition of addiction. Are we actually addicted or do we just really enjoy handbags more than the average person? And here, I can't speak for you guys. I can only speak for myself, but you can listen to what I have to say, apply it to yourself. There'll be some overlap. There'll be some differences. You're adults, you can make your own decision here. You can self-diagnose, not technically, but you know what I mean. Based on that information, do I think that I am actually a handbag or a shopping addict? My answer is no. I have lots of reasons for that and one could argue, well sure you're saying no because you're in denial and you don't want to admit that you're addicted to handbags and shopping. I could, yes, except I think my responses are quite valid as to why I'm not. So let's go through them. I know where my interest in handbags comes from. I also know my shopping habits and I know my finances and I'm on top of all of that. Having this channel definitely plays a big part in everything I'm about to talk about because it makes me more aware of what I'm buying and how I'm shopping and how I'm spending because I'm constantly thinking about it because I'm constantly working on this channel. First, my shopping patterns. I think my shopping patterns are pretty typical for the average American. I tend to spend a lot at Christmas time and the months leading up to Christmas, not only buying gifts like the average person does, but also buying things for Vlogmas, work expenses, to make Vlogmas more interesting for you guys. The advent calendars, the little do-it-yourself advent calendar, that I do Christmas gifts not only for the people in my real life but also YouTube friends. That time of year is a huge expense for me and by the time Christmas rolls around I am tired of shopping and spending money. I get really sick of it so I tend to take a break for about a month or two in January, February. However, I am constantly year-round even when I'm sick of shopping looking at websites because of my channel because I'm looking for content for videos or content for community posts, things I can talk to 
to you guys about sales I can share with you. Because just because I'm sick of shopping doesn't mean that you are. And then my shopping tends to rev up in the springtime. That has certainly happened again this year. I've purchased quite a few things lately. And then it slows down again toward the end of the summer and very early fall as people start to save up for that next round of Christmas. My biggest problem with the concept of addiction, and I know this is going to go against our current scientific understanding of it, of it being a brain disorder and something you just can't help doing. My problem is that it's behavioral. No matter what the addiction is, there are behaviors involved. And to me, behaviors involve choice. Typically a series of behaviors with a series of decisions that need to be made by the person. I'm going to give you an example from my father, and this is what I always go back to in my own head. There was a point at which my father was not living in our house. He was living in our garage in the backyard, and that was because when he was in our house, he was constantly pawning our things to get money to get drugs. During this time, here's what he would do, and pay attention to the series of behaviors that all require a series of decisions over the course of a couple of hours. He's in the backyard. He decides that he wants to break into the house, steal something of ours, and go pawn it. The way that he gets into the house without physically breaking something that would then have to be paid for to replace is we had these windows that they're kind of like mini blinds, except they were glass, and you would turn a thing inside the house and they would open up. So he would from outside of the house take these glass panels off and make enough room for him to get inside the house. So that took some care and some decision making right there. Then crawling into the house, which is not a normal thing to do, and you'd think, hey, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. There's a decision there. And then when he would steal from me, at that point in this story, I had put a deadbolt on my bedroom door to try to stop him from getting into my room. I also had a window that went between my room and my sister's room, and I had boarded that up. So he would get into my room two ways. He would kick in the board, and then when he'd leave, he'd put it back. Like, he didn't damage the wood, is what I'm saying. He would just kick in where the nails came out and then push it back. Or, to bypass the deadbolt on my door, he would take the door off its hinges. Now imagine if you are doing either of those things. It takes some time and care to do that. It takes decision making. This is just one of the the major decisions that he had to make along this process. Once he was in my room via one of those difficult routes, I then had a gun safe or a trunk with a padlock on it, and he had ways of getting into those that mostly had to do with the hinges, getting in through the hinges and then putting it all back together. So he would take the time to get in very carefully, take whatever he wanted to go pawn, and then carefully, thoughtfully put it back so I wouldn't be able to tell that he'd moved anything and that he'd been there at all. Then put the door back on the hinges or the board back in the wall, put the glass pieces back in the window, and then pack everything up on his bicycle, get on the bicycle, ride it like a mile or two to the pawn shop, go through the whole process of pointing. You see what I'm saying here? There are a lot of behaviors and decision-making along that route. There were a lot of opportunities for him to make a different decision. So long story long, that wasn't short. I have trouble seeing addiction, this is just my personal opinion here, as something that's not controllable because, especially if it's a behavior, there are just so many opportunities to make a different decision. Now I know people are going to get upset by me saying that, but that's how I feel honestly. Now, how does this apply to the handbag shopping process? Well, if you're at the point where you're watching social media, you're subscribed to channels, you're in Facebook groups, you follow people on Instagram, and it's all about handbags and stuff, luxury things, then you're probably at a point where you're finding out early, months and months early, about new collections that are coming out from the luxury brands. So you have this sort of insider information, and you have that time to plan what you might want from that collection and there's decision making there and then if you're really into the handbags you know that if you want something from a new collection they often sell out before they hit stores so you have to get yourself into a position where you can connect to a sales associate and try to pre-order things that takes a lot of decision making and effort but that's also just how the process works that's what you have to do to be able to get some of these things and I don't see that as making you an addict when that's just how it works 
And even if you're not talking about a new collection where things are sold out ahead of time, whether you're looking online directly at the brand's websites, or you're looking at department stores, or you're looking at pre-loved sites, or you're going to shop in person, there's so much variety in the handbag world. And if you're really into handbags, there's so much to learn about it. In my experience, and from what I've seen from other people, it takes a long time to really learn where you fit or where the handbags fit into your life. What are the styles that are really great for you? What do you like, but it turns out it doesn't work for you? It's a lot of trial and error to get to a point where you really know what you love and what works and doesn't. And that trial and error requires buying handbags and figuring things out for yourself. Also, there are always these new designs coming out to tempt us. And just because we don't need another handbag doesn't mean that buying another one makes us an addict. I would compare it to any other kind of collecting or interest where you buy something. Or what about technology even? Just because you buy something you don't need doesn't make you an addict. People upgrade their phones all the time before they need Need to that doesn't make you addicted to a phone nor does it make you a shopping addict and there's this idea of handbag piece and how that's a myth and people who are really into handbags will never have handbag piece you'll never be satisfied with what you have you'll always want more but I think that has to do more with the fact that there's so much out there there's so much variety there's so many new things that come up all the time and I think that's true with anything like clothes just because you have a wardrobe full of clothes and you want more and you want to add more variety doesn't make you an addict or makeup for that matter. As far as the self-control aspect, do I ever over shop? Absolutely, I do, but I think that's a quite relative term to use. Some of my normal shopping, other people might say is over shopping, and I might look at somebody for whom that level of shopping is normal for them, and I think it's over shopping. It's relative. I think maybe only you can determine that, unless it's something just really wild and out there. Could I stop shopping if I wanted to? Yes, I do that many times a year, like I said, after Christmas I have this period where I don't buy much. I do still look at the sales posts for my channel like I mentioned and that does sometimes get me in trouble because this has to do with the way that I shop. I was also going to mention no buys that have become pretty popular. No buys or low buys. I was invited to participate in one that a bunch of YouTubers did. I think it was in February of this year and I declined and it's because of the way I shop which is pre-loved. I have this wish list. I have things that I've been looking for sometimes for years and because most of those items are discontinued, I have to constantly look for them if I'm serious about adding them because you never know when they're going to pop up on the pre-loved market. And I've learned that I have to be ready to purchase something if it's something I really want, if it's in the condition that I want, and if it's at a price I'm willing to pay. Because of shopping that way, I can't commit to a no-buy because then I'll miss out on things that I've really wanted to add to my collection. But that's strategic. Those aren't impulse buys. These are things that are on my list that I know I've wanted. I've wanted for a long time. And in the springtime, for some reason, haven't figured this out yet, there tends to be, at least in my experience, an influx of the items I've been looking for. It seems like, I don't know if people are doing spring cleaning or what's going on, but a lot of things come available. I have purchased quite a lot this year that you guys don't even know about yet. I'll be spreading those unboxings over the next couple of months. I actually have, in addition to that Chanel Moonlight on the water bag, I have four other luxury bags that I have purchased, all pre-loved and I'm probably about to buy two more, at least one, but maybe two. Do I need these bags? Of course not. None of us need any of this stuff, just like none of us need a bunch of clothes or makeup or a luxury car or whatever, but that does not make you an addict. And that brings us to quantity. How much is too much? That is one of the traits of addiction, is a repeated behavior. So in our case, repeated shopping, repeated buying of handbags. How many handbags is too many handbags? Well, I don't know because I haven't reached that number yet. I currently have around 100. That's a lot. It's probably too many. I definitely don't use all of them. However, they each have a purpose or have had a purpose in the past. I do have a handful that I'm planning to sell. That's one thing too is I do purges from my collection a few times a year. It's not difficult for me to let go of things usually, but everything has its place. Even if it's something that just sits on the shelf and looks pretty, if that's its purpose and I'm okay with that, then I'm okay with that. 
or if it's a handbag that gets used only occasionally because it's for a particular purpose and that purpose doesn't come up very often, like an evening bag, that's okay. But also the channel comes into play here. I have a lot of bags in part so I can show you a lot of bags because that's what you expect from a handbag channel. You want to see handbags and you don't want to see the same couple of handbags over and over again, especially if they're the same ones that everybody else is showing. And there's been this concept of minimalism in the closet, in the handbags, so limiting yourself to a certain number of bags that has gone around YouTube in the last year or so. I'm actually doing a video about that next week with Dawn Loves Couture and Yota Styles, so look out for that. We are definitely not minimalists, but I also don't think any of us have a shopping addiction. We make conscious choices. It's not uncontrollable shopping. The first time I heard about shopping addiction was on Oprah, and I googled this yesterday, and I found an article on Oprah's website about a woman. She's a model, and her name is Avis Cardella. She wrote a book called Spent, Memoirs of a Shopping Addict. And in this article, she talks about how shopping filled a void for her. That is a comment that I've had directed at me a few times in mean comments that people leave. Oh, you must be so unhappy because you're buying all those bags to fill a void. You know, there's something missing in your life and you're trying to fill it with handbags. I think it's great that this author wrote a book about that, talked about her personal experience, did some analyzing of herself, and figured those things out for herself. However, I think it's a little bit dangerous that some readers take that information, whether they got it there or elsewhere, and they extrapolate that to everyone that they think shops too much. Because it's just not the case. You can enjoy something without it being a void filler. I happen to be very very happy in my life. I have a lot going on. I have great things. I'm very rarely upset or sad. I'm not lonely. I'm not depressed. There's no void to be filled. I just enjoy handbags like so many of you do. Just because you enjoy something and you may be excessive about it, excessive not obsessive, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong. We talk about this in the mean comments videos. Just because somebody has a hundred handbags doesn't mean there's something wrong with them. Take another example like collecting stamps. If somebody had a hundred stamps, you wouldn't say there's something wrong with you. You have too many stamps, you need to get rid of some of those stamps. Or coins, or Jay Leno collects cars. Doesn't he have like a hundred classic cars? Does that mean there's something wrong with him? Because you only need one car. No, it's just a passion. It's something you enjoy. And it doesn't mean he's addicted to cars. Now on the tail end of the definition of addiction, there are consequences. The addiction has some kind of negative consequence, but you keep doing it anyway. It could be a consequence to yourself or to someone else. So it could affect relationships. It could affect finances. A couple of things to say on this. One, I hear a lot of talk in the YouTube community more on social media like Facebook groups where people talk about hiding their purchases from their husbands, hiding their packages. Winnie BLV, one of my friends, even has this line at the end of every video that she does where she says, if you see my husband, don't tell him nothing. And she does it in this joking way and a lot of people are joking about it, but people are actually serious. They do, they do hide purchases from their significant other. Now, now, some of that could be financial, where the, the significant other doesn't want you spending money on handbags or thinks you've spent too much on it. My personal opinion on this is that it's really probably more about the judgment, because there is so much judgment about luxury handbags, although there's not judgment on buying cars and golf clubs and whatever, other expensive things. So I think a lot of people may hide the purchases because they just don't want to hear the judgment. If you're hiding your purchases for financial reasons, that could be more of a problem. Problem. Not saying it necessarily is, but it could be. My solution to that is to have your money separate. That's what Paul and I do. He has his money that he earns and keeps in his accounts. I have my money that I earn and I keep in my accounts. And we never check with each other about purchases because we have our own money and we can do whatever we want with our own money. He bought a car once without even talking to me about it first. I buy handbags all the time and I don't tell him. Not because I'm keeping it a secret, but because it's my money and I can do whatever I want with it and he has no say in it. People also talk about not going into debt for luxury. I have a whole video on this about debt, specifically credit cards and putting luxury on credit cards and other kinds of debt like those pay in for things like Klarna and Afterpay and all that. I'll link that video below. I really think that putting luxury or anything else on credit cards, it doesn't matter if it's luxury, anything you put on credit cards, you just have to be responsible about it. You have to know that you can pay it off or that you're okay paying the minimum for the rest of your life or whatever your decision is, that's up to you. No judgment here. I use those pay in for things all the time just to spread the money out some, but then I tend to pay them off early. I got paid yesterday and I went in and 
and paid off all of those. So it really just depends on your circumstances. As long as you know what you're doing and you're okay with that and you're keeping on top of it, okay. I have a system. I've talked about this in another video. I think maybe the How I Afford Luxury video. I'll link that below too. I have a whole spreadsheet system where I keep track of every penny that comes in, every penny that goes out. I have things budgeted out for the rest of the year, all my bills and stuff. When I do something like Klarna or Afterpay, I put that into the budget so they aren't unexpected payments that come up and I forgot about them. I know they're coming and that way I don't get into trouble. Also in that video where I talked about debt, I had a lot of people comment and say how they use credit cards responsibly for rewards. That was something I'd forgotten about and I've started using one of my cards to build up airline miles. Also, let me say this, people were saying in that video in the comment section that they'll spend and then they will pay it off the next month pay the whole balance off. I'm not giving financial advice here, but let me tell you what my sister told me. My sister works for a nonprofit where they help first-time home buyers get approved for loans, and part of her job is to do some financial and credit counseling. So she was telling me some things about credit cards and saying in terms of building your credit score, you don't want to buy and then pay off the balance immediately. You actually want to keep a balance, a small balance, on your card because then it registers as credit credit and it gets complicated and this is why I hate the whole credit system and think that it's a big scam. There are all these rules that nobody tells you and the things that seem to be common sense like pay off your card immediately actually work against you from what she was telling me when you're trying to build your credit score. So off topic, sorry. Anyway, addiction. I'm not denying that there are some people who are addicted to handbags and addicted to shopping. That's a real thing. For some people, their spending, their shopping is out of control. I don't feel like it is for me. Mine is excessive. For a lot of YouTubers, it's excessive. For a lot of you, it is excessive. However, that's different from an actual addiction. And I would guess the people who are actually addicted are a pretty small percentage of us. We're just passionate about what we love, just like other people are passionate about other things. And by the way, just because we're into handbags doesn't mean it's the only thing we're interested in or passionate about because we're human and humans are multifaceted and interested in lots of different things. So I hope that answers your question and gives you some clarity. And I'm sure there are plenty of points that I left out. Anything you want to talk about, please leave your comments in the comment section below. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was informative and helpful and interesting. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.